Hello, my name's uh, Jeremy Shaw from the Centre for Microscopy Characterisation and Analysis at the University of Western Australia and welcome to this tutorial uh, on how to reorient data using a 3D slicer. Uh, so uh, I'll keep this uh, as short as possible uh, and I'm just going to be running through uh, the tutorial sheet that I've also created uh, which you'll be able to access uh, via one of the links. And so I've opened this um, test data set, uh, this turtle head data set in 3D Slicer. And uh, I'll also try and make this available as well so you can use, as, use it as a uh, test. And so um, let's uh, follow through uh, the instructions on how to do this. So. Why are we doing this? Uh, well, often um, data that we collect using various imaging modalities uh, is in a suboptimal orientation. Uh, so in this case, uh, you can see the turtle head is kind of uh, rotated uh, a little bit off axis uh, during the scan, and uh, we might want to uh, re-slice it uh, according to um, sort of its, its anatomy. It's, um, it's a bilateral um, uh, symmetry and we might want to um, section along those various axes uh, according to its uh, anatomy. Okay, so first things first, let's uh, visualize the data uh, so that we don't get uh, confused. What you want is to have uh, these axes visible in the viewer, uh, which you can set by default uh, by going to the edit application settings uh, views menu and ensure this orientation marker is set to axes okay it does require a restart so do that before you load your data in and you want to make sure that your three viewers here are always in this um, axial coronal and sagittal view so looking directly down each of these uh, red, green and blue uh, lines and you can check on that by hovering your mouse over the little pin icons and uh, ensuring that these are set to the appropriate uh, value. Um, it's always nice to see these in the 3D window as well so do that by clicking on the eye icon and that will make the um, view visible in this 3D viewer and do that for each of the views uh, so let's just to choose those. So we have all three views on and we want to center this uh, uh, 3D view. So let's click on the little icon here to center the view and let's zoom in a little bit. So you can see now we have uh, each of our three slices through the data and we can see that in the 3D viewer nicely. It's not critical but it does help uh, navigate yourself around. Okay, so Next step, let's go to the data menu in the modules and we're going to go to this transform hierarchy and on the data we're going to right click and insert a transform. So we now have this linear transform 3. We go back to the subject hierarchy and on the data again we right click on the uh, little grid icon here and we want to set it from none to linear transform 3 uh, which attaches this linear transform to the data. We now want to go to the transforms module and if any of these uh, are not visible in this drop down list you can search for them using the uh, tool here and you can place them as shortcuts across the top. Okay, So I'm going to choose transforms um, Transform uh, Linear Transform 3 should be in the Active Transform menu at the top here and you should have uh, flatback downsampled 70 microns uh, in uh, the transformed menu down here or list. And so what we can now do is use translations and rotations to position the data where we want them into the correct orientation. We don't really want to worry about transforms. We're not uh, going to be moving our data side to side or up and down. We're not worried about that today. Um, we're going to be worrying about uh, rotations. So 
let's now move each of these sliders uh, to get the data into the orientation we want. Okay, so we're going to move this uh, one here into an orientation that makes some sense. Uh, in this case, we're going to have uh, the top of the head uh, on this green axis here. By default, I would normally put uh, the vertical axis um, in the blue orientation, which is the sort of Z direction typically in 3D data, um, but today I'll just have it this orientation. Uh, so we've done that. Uh, let's now move to the next window and uh, let's have the uh, head pointing in the up direction like so. And then finally in the third window, uh, we just want to make sure that it's uh, sitting in the right plane. You can scroll through the slices as well uh, to position it into the center of the sample and things like that. Um, but uh, I'll let you guys play with that. So I'm not going to worry too much about getting it perfect. Um, let's just say that uh, that is about where we want to be um, in terms of our new orientation. And we can see the position of those slices uh, in the 3D window. Uh, so uh, that can help you navigate around a little bit. And once you're happy with that, um, I'm just going to click on the data, the transform data here and click on this one here, which is Harden Transform. Okay, uh, and the data disappears back into the transformable box. Okay, so the data is transformed and now we want to actually uh, re-slice it according to the, the new position on the grid. And to do that, we're going to use a module called Resample Scalar Volume. Uh, I haven't got it in my list, so let's search for it. Resample Scalar Volume, this one here. Switch to module, and here we have it. So we should have uh, Resample Scalar Volume here. We want to choose an appropriate interpolation method. Uh, in this case, I'm going to choose uh, Langsos. Uh, which does a pretty good job for um, uh, 3D data in general. Um, just be aware that this is changing your data. So you are doing an interpolation and uh, so each of the voxels in the image, uh, the grayscale values are going to get mapped from their original position to a new position on the grid. So just be aware that that is happening um, and it may be important for the particular project that you're working on. Next up we have to select the input volume, uh, which in our case is the flat back uh, down sampled data. And we want to select an output volume. So we're going to go create a new volume as, and let's call it uh, flat back resampled. Okay, we can call it reoriented, whatever you like. And once uh, you've done that, uh, you just click apply. And so we now see the process running. Depending on the power of your computer and the size of the data, uh, this can take uh, some time. Uh, this is a downsampled data set, so it's fairly small. Um, and this computer is reasonably powerful. OK. So uh, it's now done the resampling. You can see the axis. It automatically puts these on a, a bit of a tilt for whatever reason. Uh, so you might want to go now back to uh, you can see it says reformatted here. You can go back here and force it back onto the ax axial and sagittal and coronal, whichever way you want uh, for each of those boxes. And you can see now that each of these is sliced according to their new orientation. Okay, so nice and symmetrical according to the bilateral symmetry of the sample and uh, that is what we're after. So what this does though, um, when you uh, do an interpolation, it generally makes the volume uh, larger, okay, because if you didn't uh, it would potentially crop off, uh, uh, if you kept the original bounding box it would crop off the, uh, uh, some of the original data which we didn't want. Okay, so um, the data set might be a little bit larger, um, so just bear that in mind. And one of the optional uh, steps is to crop the data uh, down to a smaller volume, uh, which I'll show you now. 
So let's go to the crop module. Um, the crop module isn't here either, so let's search for that. Crop, crop volume, switch to module. Okay, so the input volume is going to be our flat back resampled um, and uh, select uh, an input region of interest. Uh, we're going to create a new, um, new re region of interest as. Um, and so we want to call this, uh, some, let's call it flat back cropped. And you can see it brings up these uh, sliders here, um, which we can uh, drag according to uh, the bounding box. However, as you can see, the uh, region of interest box here is actually um, been placed according to the old um, coordinates, the old grid. Uh, so this is not what we want. We don't want an off axis like this. Um, so if you find that uh, this is the case, what you need to do is you return to the data module and you just want to go to this uh, crop volume region of interest alignment and uh, right click um, on here and it should be set to none and this flat back cropped should also be set to none. Okay and that will reset the box back to uh, the coordinate frame that it should be on and allow us to reposition those boxes. So let's, uh, let's do that. I'm going to move these. We just want to zoom out uh, so we can see where we are a bit more clearly. Um, we can reposition these boxes like so. And we can also see that in the 3D window as well. So I'm just going to reposition the size so we can see where we are. And just bring it down to a meaningful. You might want to go through the slices to make sure that you're not cropping off anything uh, relevant. So just look at how high the sample goes to its maximum extent uh, up here. So we can know we can get away with cropping off much as we can. Okay, I might just crop off the back of that sample because it's uh, got a little bit of distortion at the base there so we can get rid of that. And so now we have this new volume um, that we've assigned. Let's go back to the crop volume editor. Helps to place these under shortcuts so we we're uh, not getting lost all the time. Okay, so uh, once you're happy with the position of that region of interest box, the crop box, um, then click apply. Okay, and it will generate that new input region of interest flatback cropped box. Okay, and your data is now cropped uh, and realigned. Okay, so I hope you found that useful. Just be sure to uh, save the data uh, that you've generated uh, so you can go back to data and uh, save any of these relevant uh, files. Um, and that's it. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Um, I'll see you later.